This is a MacBook Air from the year 2013. That means that this is the last MacBook Air that supports the latest macOS Big Sur operating system. Let's see what's inside it. If you go to about this Mac, so we can see that it runs to macOS Catalina. It has four gigabytes of RAM. It has 128 gigabytes of SSD storage. And if we see the compatibility chart for the macOS Big Sur, we see that the last MacBook Air that it is supported is 2013 or newer. So what I will gonna do, I will upgrade from the bootable flash where I have installed the new macOS Big Sur version 11.0.1 and after that we run some apps and see if it's laggy or not because it has the 4 gigabytes of RAM only. So the next thing what we're gonna do we will need to have this uh, USB flash. It should be at least 16 gigabytes of flash memory. I created this a bootable flash for macOS Big Sur. If you're interested, I can make a separate video how to make a bootable flash through terminal application. That's actually very easy and fast. And this year, if you look to the system preferences and updates, you can see that Big Sur is 12 gigabytes huge. Usually all the new macOS operating systems were about 8 gigabytes or so. So if you want to create a bootable macOS Big Sur flash, you need to have at least 16 gigabytes on it. So this one is 32 gigabytes. It already contains a bootable macOS on it. Here you can see it recognizes it. The next thing we need to do is to connect it to the power source the good old MagSafe charger and now we need to restart our MacBook and after we press restart we need to hold down this alternate option key this one or this one we just press the ALT key and wait for the bootable flash to appear. So we can see this is the MacBook hard drive and this is the macOS Big Sur. We just choose with arrows or with the trackpad and push enter. And it greets us with these options. I want to install a clean macOS installation on it. So we need to format the drive completely so all the data will be lost. Before you do this, you need to create a backup for your computer and even duplicate all your files, documents, everything that is on your computer before you do this step. After everything is clean and you back everything up, the next option is Disk Utility. So double press it and it shows these options. This one shows it's the external drive. That's my bootable flash. It has install macOS Big Sur. Main drive is this internal drive. We need to click on the first one and after that we need to select Erase. Click Erase, rename the partition to... You can use any name here. You can use your name, your brand name, anything. This is the name for the SSD only. Not for your account, not for your Apple ID. The format needs to stay the APFS. The APFS without encryption or anything like that just plain APFS. The next step will erase everything that's on your computer. So you need to be sure that all your files are backed up before you do this. After that, just click Erase. And as you see, the process is complete. Just select Done. And now your computer is empty. Actually, we can delete this partition. Now you can see this is your new Macintosh SSD and it's all empty. After this we need to install the macOS Big Sur. 
So just click on the red dot here and close this window. We're closing the disk utility and we are back on this main installation screen. We don't need to restore from the Time Machine backup. If you have one, you can restore from the Time Machine Mac backup. But in this video, this will be clean Mac OS Big Sur installation process. So just click two times here or just click once and continue. Install Mac OS Big Sur. Let's continue. Here you are greeted with a new picture. Let's push continue. Let's agree. Agree. And this is the bootable flash. We don't need it. We just need to click on the Macintosh SSD and push continue. And here you can see the process is maybe longer or not so not that long, depends on the power of your computer. We will need to wait these minutes and after that the real installation process will start. So after these 16 minutes the Mac is booting up and the real installation process will start. And as you can see it will run for about 29 minutes. And after it's done we'll set up the new Mac OS Big Sur. So it's been a while, it's already evening, the lights are on and the Mac OS Big Sur has been installed on this MacBook Air mid-2013, the last Mac that supports it. The interface is a little bit different, we can customize the settings here, we can choose any language we want, continue, dictation, continue, accessibility, we need to connect to the Wi-Fi. After we connected to the Wi-Fi, there is data privacy, continue, migration assistant from a Mac, time machine backup or startup, as it is a clean install, not now. And here you can sign in to your Apple ID. After we logged in, we need to accept these iCloud terms and conditions. Just check it and push agree. Now it's setting up the iCloud account. And as you can see in the background, we have this new Mac OS Big Sur wallpaper. And there are many more new ones. Express setup. And we can customize settings again. We will enable location services. We can share Mac analytics with Apple or share crash and usage data with app developers. We will uncheck both. Continue. Screen time. You can set up later. This is the new feature that came in iOS 13 in iPhones. And last of all, there is Siri. We will disable it right now. Click continue. File vault disk encryption. We'll pass. Continue. And we can choose the dark background or automatic depends on the day or night when you use your mac we'll choose light one click continue and the mac is setting up these are the last steps and we should be right in the new mac os big Sur version on the latest supported macbook air 2013. this is our bootable flash we will just eject it we don't need it anymore as you can see, there's a new wallpaper. You can choose much more wallpapers here. If you just go to the wallpaper section, you can see all these dynamic wallpapers. Depending on the day, if it's noon or evening or morning, it shows the background depending on the time you are using your Mac. So these are the new, I'll zoom in. These are the new wallpapers and these stripes show you that these are dynamic wallpapers and here you can see how they look on the desktop background this year there are much more new wallpapers than ever before and so on so the main differences are that the icons here are squared, not rounded anymore. And this is the new control panel. There are many things that are taken from the iOS, like display brightness. Some say that they want to use it like a touch screen. <laughs> but no touch screen is coming for Apple anytime soon. This is the sound bar. You can change the keyboard brightness to here. If you choose the Wi-Fi, 
you can go to the Wi-Fi settings. So okay, as you can see, all the settings are inside this square setup menu, as well as Bluetooth. If you want Bluetooth to be available here, you can just click and drag it like that. And the new features are the sidebar. As you can see, all the new widgets are coming to macOS. So you can choose between widgets, you can remove some of them. Let's remove everything and let's see what we can use. There are small widgets, medium and large. If you want a large one, just drag and drop here or you can just push the plus icon. The clock is only small or medium, just click plus and it goes right here. And you can change the order and if you're done you just click done and from the sidebar you can see your widgets here this is the new launchpad icon you can see all your apps here and let's open some apps new safari let's open apple.com Yes, you can see it's a little bit sluggish because of the four gigabytes of RAM. Let's open calendar. Let's open maps. Yes, it takes a little time. Let's open Apple TV. Let's open podcasts. Takes a while. And if we open the Apple TV app once again, the second time, you can see it opens a little bit faster. If you do the same on the podcasts app, it's the same. So the first time it will always open a longer period of time. Maybe we can see the magic if we close the lid and open the lid once again. How fast will it wake up? So three, two, one. And you can see it wakes up immediately. The next thing we will restart the computer and see how fast it restarts. Yes, and the old chime is returning to the Mac OS Big Sur. There were a couple of years that the sound was removed and now it's back. Feels like old school MacBook again. So it booted up in 34 seconds this time. I think it depends on the SSD storage speed it has a very low speed read and write because the earlier MacBook Air models didn't have the super fast SSD speeds like they have on newer Macs. Let's try to open again Apple TV app because it's web based. And it opens up at the same speed. So let's try the podcast app again. And it opens up pretty fast actually for that old of a computer. The new in Mac OS Big Sur are the new sounds. So let's say we want to delete something. Like in the movies we have this TV folder, we want to remove this folder, so we do delete it and the sound goes like and if we want to empty the bin, the sound is a bit different too. So these are the tiny new things, visuals, you can see the finder and all the sounds on all the control panels, the quick access to it and actually the apps open 
just as fast, maybe even faster than on the Mac OS Katarina. And again, it wakes up very fast. If you close the lid, it goes to sleep. And after a couple of seconds, you open it up and it's awake already. So that's about it. This is the mid-2013 MacBook Air with the newest Mac OS Big Sur installed on it, as you can see. Version 11.0.1 And if you like this video, subscribe to this channel and my Instagram profile at TechYouThrough as well. Take care and let's meet in the next episode of TechYouThrough.